Right now I'm building Superblog. It's a blazing fast and auto SEO blogging platform where it automatically uh, optimizes your content and your blog to be in sync with Google uh, audits. My first software called M Hotspot. Uh, M Hotspot turns uh, a laptop into Wi-Fi hotspot. In buses you have this pen drive that goes into the TV. So instead of that, it goes into Superblog. Sorry, uh, spot play. <laughs> Sorry, Superblog is everywhere. <laughs> Hello guys, welcome to Startup Tales. Here we are with one more new interesting startup, Superblog, and a fascinating founder, Mr. Sai Krishna. Sai Krishna is from a very small village called Palmur in Andhra Pradesh. Sai is an indie hacker and he has been a part of startup leadership program as well. Also, he has built many star uh, new startups like M Hotspot, Spotplay, and uh, Dizzy Booster, and now Superblog. Let's know more about Superblog and Sai Krishna in his own words. Um, hello everyone. Uh, thank you, Akla, for the warm uh, introduction. Thank you. Uh, thank you so much for accepting our invitation. Sir. It's my pleasure. Um, so right now I'm building Superblog. It's a blazing fast and auto SEO blogging platform. Generally, instead of you installing a blog and optimizing uh, it uh, throughout the process and hiring experts to make sure it follows Google's guidelines, Superblog is a blogging platform where it automatically uh, optimizes your content and your blog to be in sync with Google uh, audits. So you'll score 95 plus uh, automatically in Google audits. Wow, that's amazing. We would love to know your story, basically starting from your childhood, college days and your professional journey as well. Okay. Um, so uh, as I said, like in a born in a small village, hmm. um, did my schooling there, then moved to a boarding school in a city. Hmm. Um, did my plus one and plus two. Uh, after that, I got into engineering. Mm -hmm. uh, engineering was a turning point for me. Uh, so I did my uh, graduation and post graduation from Andhra University. Um, so I scored rank 17 in the wow. entrance exam. Wow. Um, so in third year, I built my first software called M Hotspot. Uh, M Hotspot turns uh, a laptop into Wi-Fi hotspot. So I don't know if you guys actually remember like the last decade. <laughs> so Wi-Fi was not everywhere. Right, so we used to right, have Ethernet I mean... cables and uh, the uh, dongles, you know, like you connect to the connect. laptop and you mm -hmm. use internet with that. So one problem back then was uh, you need to share internet from your dongle to your multiple devices. So it was not really possible with uh, Windows laptop because it was using a different protocol called uh, ad hoc hotspots. Uh, Android phones back then, they didn't have that protocol. So we need to set up a Wi-Fi with infrastructure mode. Mm -hmm. uh, so I had got my own uh, Android phone back then and uh, the Windows laptop was not able to do that. So <laughs> then I thought, see, uh, it is just hardware, right, uh, right. in laptop or Wi-Fi router. So I looked at uh, Windows internal uh, APIs and uh, so I was able to trigger an, a hotspot which was able to be uh, detected by uh, an Android phone. Oh. So I launched it, uh, it became an instant hit. Uh, so I was uh, doing a little bit of blogging uh, since I was a teenager. Mm -hmm. So I had a fair understanding of uh, what SEO and how to target mass search volumes and search queries so that we can get inbound traffic. Uh, so I use that for mHotspot and even till today, okay. uh, you can search for certain keywords like create hotspot, Wi-Fi hotspot, with laptop mm -hmm. or mm -hmm. laptop hotspot, mobile Wi-Fi or like anything. So mHotspot will be on page one. So so that with combination of that and uh, you know, uh, uh, you know, it was all most of timing also I would say. Uh, M Hotspot hit a million downloads uh, and then you know another million, another million. Mm -hmm. So it became one of the most used uh, software in turn 13. It mm -hmm. was listed on cnat.com alongside Google Chrome, Photoshop. Uh, so yeah, so that was the M Hotspot journey. So I completed my graduation and I was out. Um, so instead of taking a job, I was already uh, building certain apps and games and generating revenues. So I thought uh, I can actually focus on building my own uh, like you know portfolio of products so for two years uh, so i built my own products um, so some incidents happened <laughs> uh, say like mainly uh, so i got uh, investor calls from top tier vcs and that calls made me understand that i'm not really good at business so, mm -hmm. so i'm a techie that's what i got the feedback uh, that's when I understood you need a certain skill set, you know, uh, so building products is fine and generating revenues, you know, so say like zero to 100k ARR, it's fine. 
but to build a large company right uh, what it takes to build mm. a 10 million arr company a 100 million arr company so you need certain uh, either business co-founder or business skill set okay. that's what i understood uh, that's when uh, one of my uh, best friends uh, suggested uh, i should uh, take up uh, an accelerator program you know to actually learn from uh, experienced founders because i was a kid back then mm-hmm. um, so then i joined this startup leadership program uh, wow. it's in bangalore bangalore chapter mm. so it was an amazing experience i met uh, like really solid uh, founders um so there i met my uh, future co-founder as well uh, so i was trying to bring m hotspot this software mm-hmm. into a hardware device into the market right um so my co-founder santosh uh, he had a b2b idea like uh, so like uh, you know you, you, pe- people usually travel in buses and mm-hmm. cabs and so they need to watch whatever is placed on played on the theater. tv TV mm-hmm. and in the international flights you usually have that Wi-Fi you know you get connected to the Wi-Fi and watch on your device so you're not limited by the screen anymore uh, and it, this technology doesn't require internet it's called local Wi-Fi streaming mm-hmm. um, so Santosh and I we thought I already had a hotspot product and uh, so it worked on a different uh, protocol because it was for a, meant for a different purpose so when Santosh pitched me this idea I got like very excited uh, so I'm like, finally, I'm happy because I can focus on tech. <laughs> so I don't need to worry about business. Mm. So Santosh is a hardcore business guy. So I started focusing on the tech. So then uh, we came up with this new uh, device uh, that goes into buses and cabs. And mm-hmm. Generally, in buses, you have this pen drive that goes into the TV. TV. So instead of that, it goes into Superblog. Sorry, uh, Spotplay. <laughs> Sorry, Superblog is everywhere. <laughs> so the Spotplay device then creates a local Wi-Fi hotspot. So you can stream movies, mm-hmm. HD movies mm-hmm. without buffering at all. So think of it like offline Netflix in a bus. Wow. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. So but. Uh, yeah, we did that. Uh, some other hurdles in the journey. Mm-hmm. Um, so after that, uh, I took a small break, uh, focused on open source, um, did some road trips. Uh, <laughs> refreshing. So, yeah, so it was refreshing. Uh, so we, Spotplay was actually selected for Startup Chile as well. Uh, it's okay. an international, uh, like a well accomplished program. Okay. Uh, so I think five startups were selected from India back then. We were one of them. Okay. Um, you need to be a startup founder already to become a part of that. Yeah. So it's an accelerator okay. Okay. Uh, by the country of Chile. Okay. Um, so they select very handful startups mm-hmm. uh, to like you know come to their country mm-hmm. and start a business there, mm-hmm. and you know mm-hmm. so it is widely regarded as Y Combinator of South America. You know. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, for example, uh, in my batchmates from that uh, Startup Chile program, I think two of them, one of them is unicorn already. Okay. One other is close to becoming a unicorn. Uh, like very successful mm-hmm. bat- like uh, products mm-hmm. came from there. Um, so yeah. So after that, after the road trip, um, I came back to India. Uh, so then I was part of this startup called Digi Booster. Mm-hmm. Uh, so Digi Booster was founded by Nandini Mansingha. Uh, she she is the Mumbai Angel Network CEO. Okay. Um, so the board hired uh, CEO and CTO externally, you know, uh, to run the startup. Mm-hmm. So I was hired uh, by the board to be the CTO. Um, so we built uh, influencer marketing platform, like took a pivot from content marketplace, mm-hmm. and then uh, you know we had some good uh, revenues in the first uh, ten months. Uh, so this was like um, in 2019 to 20. Okay. Uh, so then mm-hmm. the COVID actually <laughs> struck us. Um, so our existing investor uh, actually hired the product and my CEO and our CEO in that uh, company. Uh, I took a break again. Uh, so experimented with multiple uh, ideas and neural networks. Uh, so then, uh, you know, Superflow was born, you know. Uh, mm-hmm. I realized uh, with my past journey and experience and doing the same thing over and over again. Uh, setting up a blog, optimizing it, optimizing mm-hmm. a server. So it's a you already been into hazard. it. Mm-hmm. Okay. So yeah, did some open source uh, contributions in blogging field as well. So everything I think added up to a super blog. So you have been into many star- I mean startups, right? First uh, M Hotspot and then Spotplay and yeah. then Dizzy Booster and now Superblog. So out of all the startups which you have started, like what are the lessons you have learned from each of it, mm-hmm. which you think you know would be valuable to the other entrepreneurs out there now? Sure. Um, so that's actually a very good question. Yeah, right. Uh, so I, uh, based on my experiences, right, building so many products and startups, mm-hmm. uh, I have my own framework. 
so what i say uh, worked for me or like you know i Maybe try not. to work from that it's not like gospel truth so mm-hmm. uh, so try to so this is what like startup founders usually need to look at like different frameworks and see what works for them uh, so coming to me uh, in spotlay uh, one thing i realized was when you so uh, i tend to optimize for probability usually so i tend to look the world from uh, mathematics uh, so when we are say for example building spotlay right uh, mm-hmm. there are so many factors external factors which are not in our control generally startup is a very uh, you know uh, tough game but when when in certain startup like spotlight like we need content so we need to spend lots of money to acquire content like from t series uh, all the bollywood uh, you know the big labels uh, so that that's like uh, something that i wouldn't do now because it requires a lot of capital and then it's a hardware product right um, so it it requires a lot of capital so if we want to deploy spotlight mm-hmm. into 100 Uh, buses and cabs mm-hmm. so it's a fixed cost that we need to somehow like you know Incurs. manage mm-hmm. but when you compare this to a software product like a saas yes. we can just give out 100 licenses for free <laughs> right so that's something i understood you know uh, from spotlight like deal with uh, lesser parameters that are unstable or or expensive so that which should, you should deal with a uh, less external factor impactable things yeah right so uh, it's all about optimizing for probability Uh, so that's one thing, uh, and uh, with Digi Booster, it's mm-hmm. a different learning, right? It's building a marketplace. So uh, for marketplace, uh, it's like this chicken and egg problem, right? Until you have more users, you mm-hmm. won't have more transactions. <laughs> Until you have more transactions, you can't have more, uh, you know, users. And so, typically, like social media thing. Mm-hmm. So that's something I learned. You know, marketplaces are also hard to build. Uh, it's not impossible, but uh, again right so it will either require a combination or individually like you know or money time or effort um, so when you are building startups or new products mm-hmm. make sure you optimize this three uh, if it requires a lot of capital you know you need to think in a different way to right. go to gtm go to market mm-hmm. so a combination of all these things uh, at play uh, is what i consciously look at when i am building new things wow it's been a valuable inputs which we have received on this thank you so you also have been into the startup leadership program right yeah. so how you have get into the startup leadership program because most of us are not aware of the startup leadership program initially sure. and you know what you have learned from it basically what you have changed i mean as a person may it be your thought process or uh, the way you deal with the issues over there yeah, sure uh, everything uh, see this program uh, i mean it's uh, they have chapters all over the world but mm-hmm. um, still you know there uh, re- requires a lot of exposure mm-hmm. uh, so my best friend rohini uh, she's like very start good startup enthusiast and mm-hmm. she suggested me this mm-hmm. and uh, so typically they have batches like yearly you know like uh, uh, 20 like yearly batches and uh, uh, they have a like multiple rounds of interviews uh, they like you know grill you uh, through your thought process your mm-hmm. product uh, your business model and what you have and what you need to learn and if it's a good fit uh, they take you in and uh, so the last i knew i went through uh, so they have uh, monthly two sessions i think mm-hmm. uh, so this is is not like a typical coaching or anything the sessions but uh, experienced founders uh, you know who like you know been there done that uh they try to explain us uh how to think and how to operate in a startup world say so, you know okay. how you should do your gtm uh, okay. how you should do your uh, like ideal customer profiling mm-hmm. how you should scale uh, like you know how they failed and what should we learn from their failures so they actively uh, do these things and uh, try to make us uh, learn so it's it's not like we need to learn from our own, our own mistakes right? right we can learn from others mistakes also so in that way it's been extremely valuable and uh, honestly before slp i didn't even know what's a business model canvas <laughs> <laughs> i didn't know what are exactly like term sheets like what mm-hmm. going to that how you should negotiate with your customers your investors so everything you tend to like you know get a almost first hand experience got it and uh, why super blog you know what is the uh, difference i mean market gap that you have identified and what is the trigger point for it super sure. blog so the uh, so not just super blog all the products that i build i try to build it for myself mm-hmm. um so because i'm solving for my own problem 
so then i i will have a clear idea of like you know what to build and how to build and okay. how to scale it uh so coming exactly to how building superblock i think my last decade has been about superblock i think without knowing uh so i've been a blogger mm-hmm. i used seo for seo for my products and i was dealing with large traffic like 100k pages a month 165k pages mm-hmm. a month uh and every time it it's the same like you know churn right like install a wordpress installation optimize the server optimize the theme uh, optimize the content then i need to make sure that if any uh, like you know core web vitals are missing mm-hmm. out uh, so all these things they are, they contribute to your seo and uh, at some point of time i just realized i shouldn't do this uh, manual things over and over and again so i built my own internal framework i think it was a 19 error to medium article uh, like how i switched mm-hmm. from wordpress to my own uh, uh, like super optimized blogging uh, like framework uh, it got good reception then i contributed to another open source project called lespod uh, mm-hmm. so it's a serverless wordpress alternative like you can build complete uh, websites uh, with serverless architecture which is highly scalable and super secure um so then you know for digi booster we focused extremely on content mm-hmm. so then i had like an again rebuilt the entire uh, internal framework for the blogging i think all these things made me realize you know uh, this is what people need right so you don't put your valuable engineers mm. into building a blog so you focus on your product your blog should be automated so this actually made me realize uh, it needed and then i typically look at google trends and uh, google keyword search mm-hmm. uh, so look at actual uh, concrete mm-hmm. data um, so that made me realize superblog should be there so what differentiates superblog from the uh, other uh, competitors which you have you know the wordpress which you have mentioned right yeah. now it's been a very big competitor for you <laughs> like how you are dealing with the competition sure. which is james uh, okay so uh, uh, obviously like there's no denying that you know wordpress is the de facto mm. blogging platform and that for websites but it's understandable that uh, any uh, reasonably spend time on uh, user who spend reasonable time on wordpress they are frustrated with that mm-hmm. and uh, they need a blogging platform that they can just focus on content and that's that became the plus point for superblog and uh, people are loving the concept you know instead of thinking about servers and optimization they can just focus on writing content so that's the biggest uh, plus point and uh, people are already like you know searching for wordpress alternatives so that kind of made my job easier uh the first part is getting the exposure yeah as i have seen like if we buy a domain suppose if i buy a domain for startup tales i'll uh, in the godaddy itself uh, it will direct me to the uh, wordpress and it'll help me through got it but facing the competition and making your product visible is such a tough def- task sure so for that i'm using superblog for superblog like oh, wow. content and you know getting people involved so in this you know uh, such a busy world and all um, in the emerging tech era where there's a continuous change you need to update yourself continuously yeah. uh, so how you are keeping yourself updated with the new technical tools and you know industry trends as well sure um, so uh, me being a techy i love to read uh, and like you know uh, play with a lot of new technologies mostly i follow like hardcore developers uh, ctos of like you know large mm-hmm. startups who are dealing with uh, cutting edge technologies uh, so i follow them on twitter and you know i constantly see uh, what's new there and apart from that one thing i actively do is i look at uh, github uh, like trending repositories and you know uh, what's new mm-hmm. so that that fairly uh, like you know puts me uh, like you know in exposure to new things that's happening Yeah. may know about your revenue model of superblog and uh, no can we discuss about the milestones that you have achieved so far with respect to sure. uh, superblog yeah um, so uh, generally what people think of a blogging platform is they are free uh, so <laughs> i try to break that so there is no free plan for superblog uh, so we charge 19 dollars a month Mm-hmm. to start with and mm-hmm. typically startup start at uh, 29 dollars a month but i have seen in the website that one week free trial version yeah, there is a right. free trial for one week hmm. uh, i mean you want me to remove that free trial also <laughs> no please <laughs> so <laughs> it, it's, at it's, least it's, edit that product you should show half so the product so you need to show is... the uh, value prop uh, yeah. so almost every saas they have a free trial uh, versus freemium product so mm-hmm. i am looking at a free trial model I'll give a one week uh, you know time for them to experience the platform benefits and all that um so so far you know the reception has been good 
um, mm-hmm. um, like thousands of signups and users, uh, but uh, probably like 160, 170 paying customers now. Okay. Uh, and some of them being uh, Swiggy uses it, uh, Just Pay uses it, mm-hmm. uh, Flow, Car- uh, Flow Carrier uses them. Um, you know, they have this Zoom car of Singapore, uh, DriveLa. So, okay. DriveLa uses it, uh, their Australian counterpart, DriveMate mm-hmm. uses it. Okay, those are all your customers. Clients, okay. Yeah, so they, and bunch of, uh, you know, uh, smiles.ai mm-hmm. is a super blog. So, it's been going good. Um, so far, happy. What is one piece of advice that you would like to give to the youngsters out there who want to start something great and impactful? Start early, solve valuable problems. Don't just go for some fancy uh, products. Wow. So before concluding, we'll just have some rapid fire questions. What's your uh, favorite book or tool or app that you would use for your productivity? Google. What is the best piece of advice you have ever received? Read more books. What is your favorite way to relax after a long day of work? Um, So mostly uh, either watch a movie or listen to some good music or sometimes I cook. What are the two traits that you have, uh, uh, I mean, that you love about yourself? I'm extremely patient and uh, I can learn things very fast. Wow. What's one thing you're currently working on to improve yourself? I'm trying to learn enterprise sales. What is your favorite thing about being a founder? We can build cool things. Your definition of words, like, you know, happiness. Doing things that we love. Success. Being happy. Entrepreneurship. Uh, making an impact. Super blog. Fast. <laughs> Sai Krishna. Uh, happiness. Wow. Thank you so much, Sai Krishna. We have really enjoyed your conversation and really learned a lot from this uh, tale. Uh, I hope you guys also enjoyed listening to Sai Krishna's tale. To know more about Sai Krishna and his uh, website, please do check the description below. Stay tuned. We'll come up with one more new interesting startup. Bye, guys.